Sarah is excited to be going to college. She can't wait to get out of her parents' house, to prove to them that she's an adult, and to prove to her new friends that she belongs. She heads to a campus party where she sees a guy that she has a crush on. Let's call him Brett. The next day, Sarah wakes up with a pounding headache. She can only remember the night in flashes, but what she does remember is throwing up in the hall outside Brett's room, then silently staring at the wall while he was inside her, wanting it to stop, then shakily stumbling home. She doesn't feel good about what happens, but she thinks maybe this is just what sex in college is. One in five women and one in 13 men will be sexually assaulted by the end of their college career in the United States. 85% of them know their assailant. Sarah initially just feels like dealing with what happened on her own. She thinks, I got myself drunk and I flirted with Brett, and eventually, maybe I would have wanted to have sex with him. It's partially my fault. He's not a bad guy. It's not that big a deal. She tries to act normal, but when she sees Brett around campus, her back tightens up, her breath speeds up, her stomach churns. She begins to hide in her dorm room as much as possible. And when a friend jokes about her and Brett hooking up, she screams at him, it wasn't like I had a choice. After that, Sarah starts to label what happened to her as sexual assault, but still she thinks, Brett's a good guy, it's partially my fault, it wasn't that big a deal. Less than 10% of college survivors ever report their assault to the school or to the police. And those who do, on average, wait 11 months to make their report. When Sarah sees Brett taking girls home from parties, she's worried about them. She draws them aside to try to warn them off, but she's not confident it worked. After graduation, she learns that she's one of five women that Brett did the exact same thing to. All were way too drunk. None consented. None reported. And this is not an unlikely scenario because 90% of sexual assaults are committed by repeat assailants who on average commit six assaults each, and that's just before they've graduated college. But with such low reporting rates, it's fairly unlikely that even repeat offenders will be reported, much less anything happen if they are. In fact, only 6% of assaults reported to police end with the assailant spending a single day in prison, meaning there's a 99% chance that they'll get away with it. This means there's practically no deterrent to sexual assault in the United States. Now, I'm an infectious disease epidemiologist by training, which means I'm interested in systems and networks and complex problems. And this, to me, is a complex and tragic but solvable problem. I run a small nonprofit, and a few years ago, my coworkers and I started interviewing college sexual assault survivors. We've talked to over 100, and what we've learned is that those who reported did so primarily to protect their community rather than an individual pursuit of justice. And those who didn't would have if they had known that their offender was a repeat assailant. And we asked them what they wished they wanted in college, and what they wanted was pretty simple. They wanted a website, one they could use at the time and place that felt safest to them, where they could receive clearly written information about their reporting options, report electronically to the authorities, save a time-stamped record of what happened to them, preserving evidence even if they do wait 11 months or more to report. And lastly, and perhaps most critically, they wanted to be able to report their assault only if someone else named the same assailant. You see, knowing that you're not the only one, it changes everything. It changes the way you frame your own ex 
experience. It wasn't just my fault. It changes the way you think about your assailant. Maybe he or she isn't a good guy. It changes your motivation to report. It means that if you do come forward, you'll have someone else's back and they'll have yours. We built a system that does all this, and it's called Callisto. And we included a unique matching feature, where if Brett's first victim had entered into the system, put in her information, and named Brett, and Brett's second victim had done the same thing a few months later, they would have matched, and the verified contact information of both survivors would have been sent to the authorities at the same time for investigation and follow-up. Now, we launched this about a year ago, and among users who created accounts, 30% entered into matching and 20% reported, which is twice the national average. And that's just in our first year. If a system like this had existed for Sarah and her peers, it's more likely that they'd have reported, that they'd have been believed, and that Brett would have been kicked off campus, gone to jail, or at least gotten the help that he needed. And if we were able to stop repeat offenders like Brett after their second assault following a match, survivors like Sarah would never even be assaulted in the first place. We could prevent 59% of sexual assaults from ever occurring just by stopping repeat offenders earlier on. And because we're creating real consequences for assault for perhaps the first time, maybe the Bretts of the world would never even try to assault anyone. Now, the type of system that I'm describing is a type of information escrow, meaning an entity that holds on to information for you and only releases it to a third party if certain pre-agreed upon conditions are met, such as a match. The application that we built is for college sexual assault, but the same type of system could work in the military or the workplace and for any number of issues beyond sexual assault. So we've open sourced our code and people are using it. They're building sexual violence reporting in Nigeria, workplace sexual harassment reporting in India, political corruption reporting in Brazil. Imagine this at scale. If those who are silenced due to shame or fear or guilt were able to find each other, come forward and speak with one voice, imagine what the world would look like then. I created this system because I am Sarah, because my friends are Sarah, because my children, if I ever have them, will not be Sarah. I won't allow it. We won't allow it. There has never been a better time to have conversations like this. There has never been a t better time to grow a system like this, which is why in one week, we're expanding to five campuses and we'll grow it across the country from there. And as we grow, we'll learn more and more about sexual assault across America and where it works and what doesn't to prevent it. We don't have to live in a world where 99% of rapists get away with it. We can create one where those who do wrong are held accountable, where survivors get the support and justice they deserve, where authorities get the data they need, and where there is a real deterrent to violating the rights of another human being. Thank you.